Rain is incredibly threatening to anything offensive, and that's what Empo has. However, he does have some tools to get out of the matchup. Rotom is pretty much the best thing you can have against a rain team because it staves off Mega Swampert, does okay against Tornadus, and while you don't want it taking Dark Pulses because then you'll quickly get overwhelmed even with Eapapa because that's what rain does, and you're going to be left in per and Torn range, then it still can be okay as an interim measure against Greninja. So let's say your Magearna doesn't get blasted by a Hydro Pump. So uh, he's also got a Volcarona, which is not usually seen on these kinds of teams, but it's great because it fits with the really violent offense that these teams stack so effortlessly. And one of Volk's problems is that it struggles to get in safely sometimes to cause havoc, whether it's by setting up or just by taking chunks out of the opposing team that doesn't have a dedicated check, so they have to do a merry little dance every time it comes in. Uh, because Rotom lures in grass types and Volt switches, and boom, there's Volk. Uh, and we see an example of that with Ferrothorn being the only thing that really wants to take a burn. Uh, of course, it doesn't really mind the burn, because it just wants to get up its hazards and you know maybe knock something. Like the Kartana Scarf, if Kartana is really set on trying to uh, defog. So yeah, uh, Blunder's got a fair amount of ways to pressure him, but then again, so does Empo, and he's also got Metacham, which is not only a kill button, but it's also a rain check, in a sense, because of uh, Fake Out. So this is going to be a high-octane slugfest. Uh, I am looking forward to it. Let's begin. So we do see the Rotom lead, and Blunder is going to lead off with Torn. So uh, that means he was very likely expecting Volcarona to take advantage of the obvious Ferrothorn lead so that he could immediately put pressure on the obvious Rotom. Uh, Envo doesn't even bother going for the burn, he just wants instant death. So he Volt switches, doesn't give Pharaoh any time to set up hazards. I think that's uh, the right move here. Because he doesn't want to give it opportunities. You know, it's a rain team. He's going to want to uh, seize the advantage right from the very beginning. He goes right into Metacham, not wanting to potentially not get as much out of a bulk switch in. Because uh, he has several checks. I mean, not only does he have Pelipper and Rain and Greninja Water Shirk and Mega Swampert. That could potentially not go that well for him. Whereas Metacham, uh, he's going to be smacking something right off the bat. However, Rocky Helmet Tornado Therian runs defense EVs just so it can do what we saw it do, uh, eat the ice punch. And since bullet punch is extraordinarily rare on Metacham, then he's going to be getting the upper hand here. Now, he doesn't necessarily want a U-turn because that uh, Lando is very likely Rocky Helmet because the Volcarona is very likely Z. So uh, that is something to consider. It's likely that we see Blunder double switch as we do. As the Landorus comes in, is the Lando going to come in? It does, because he doesn't want Rotom or Magearna getting knocked. So now he's got to go on the back foot, and he's got Rotom to defog any spikes, or just to give more momentum with Volt Switch. And Blunder does pull off the spike, so excellent early game move from him. Uh, getting aggressive and setting his uh, Pokemon up to be real threats later. Barrow comes back. Dodges the Wisp, he decided to burn. Uh, this could also be a Defog Rotom. It's not unlikely to see du uh, dual Defog on a team with Volcarona. So he's going to get the burn off on Pharaoh. And I think I think that's a good move because it lets him Defog on... It lets him Defog away Greninja Spikes more easily as Pharaoh also uh, tries to get up Rocks. I think it's interesting, but Blunder doesn't even bother with the rocks, and he doesn't bother with the defog because he goes right for Power Whip and stings the Rotom early, uh, really hard, which means it's, well, we already knew it was Spidef, but I don't think it's packing any defense EVs. Sometimes they throw a few in there, and now he's going to get the rocks up, so that went really well for er, uh, for Blunder, as Hanfo is going to try to respond with his own stealth rock. It also might not be defog Rotom, but I think it should be, because, uh, I mean... With having Scarf Car as your only um, as your only defogger for Volcarona is 
generally not a good idea. And it's not going to be Lando because it's Rocks Lando, because it is uh, not going to be Scarf Rocks. So, uh, and if it was Scarf Rocks Lando, then it wouldn't be Z Car because you're usually going to be using a Z on Volk. So the Cartana was going to be banned, which isn't going to be, uh, which isn't really going to fit Defog on it. So. Anyway, so here's another key, key uh, moment in the game. Blunder figured, all right, well, he's got to respond with rocks uh, because that's a way to keep up pressure throughout the game so that I can uh, I, I can match him at least a little bit, and that'll give me an advantage down the stretch. But Empo had other ideas uh, because he, go, he goes right for a U-turn. He decided, nope, I'm going to catch whatever he's uh, trying to switch in here. Because there's no risk of Ferrothorn spiking up any further. And uh, I'm just going to pick up a kill. Because now that Tornadus has eaten the massive Ice Punch, then High Jump Kick is going to be fucking some shit up. Uh, especially because, I mean, Pebbleburg can take two, maybe, if it's Max Defense Bold. But Zen Headbutt follow-up is really nasty. So unless there were going to be some really sick Greninja into Zen Headbutt action, then I'm not so sure about that one. Oh yeah, he is going to U-turn. This is key because a lot of what makes Greninja dangerous... I mean, okay, a lot of things make the Greninja dangerous, but uh, one thing in particular is its ability to take a hit. Now, no one is going to say Greninja is bulky. However, you're very often going to have to hit it twice. And uh, when you're on the offensive and forcing the other guy to hit you twice, then that's really dangerous. And when you take that first hit, then you can uh, unwillingly and get nothing for it, then that's not really a good trade. So... Uh, that worked out really well for Empo, who now goes into Rotom. And uh, he is going to be out of Dark Pulse range barely, and he gets his Eapapa. So, really uh, aggressive move by Blunder, trying to wear down the Rotom. I mean, look, if he flinched there, that might have been the game. Uh, flinched or crit, because he gets Ash, uh, he denies the Defog. I mean, Empo still got the Scarf card Defog, but it's not the same. Because uh, Blunder can respond to that pretty well. Scarf Cart is kind of a threat, but it, with Rotom down, you know, the, the water moves are just going to start coming. And even with Greninja at 24, it's just uh, very likely that Blunder could have run away with that. No, he gets the Defog off. And now here's uh, a controversial move in this game. Many people were saying that uh, Blunder should have just Dark Pulsed again here. Because once Rotom eats that second Pulse then Mega Swamper is a major, major threat to Blunder, as you can see here, since Rotom is his sole water resist. So it may have been worth it. And of course, if you get the flinch, then that's amazing. Uh, he's going to have the uh, Magirna, but... Also, he wouldn't have lost Rotom necessarily, because he could have, you know, switched to Magirna and Fug, but Rocks and Spikes are down. It's just, uh, Blunder would have had a very big advantage. Anyway, so a lot of players were saying he should just pulse it again and bring into Pert range, hell, bring it into uh, Tornadus range. Because if Magirna has to fight it, then that's generally a good sign, and then Manaphy becomes more dangerous, and you can see the whole domino effect that Rotom being low would cause. However, that is not what we see happen. What we see happen is uh, Blunder trying to block the Volt Switch with Swampert, and gets Will-O-Wisps. So that was a great move from Empo. And there were, that, that's not the only thing he was trying to block. Another option uh, that Empo had, realistically, was going to Magirna just so he could keep his Rotom out of Swampert range. So Blunder uh, definitely might have expected him to do that. Because if you block the Volt Switch, then it, there's not really that much reward. Because, okay, block Volt Switch, now Swampert's facing off a 56 Rotom, which can still fuck with it really easily. So what? Then you get then you go to Ferrothorn and on the Will O' Whisper Hydro Pump and you get rocks back up. Okay, that's nice, but not really necessary. So I think it's a lot likelier that he was trying to catch the Magirna on the switch, so that he could uh, start pummeling away. However, uh, many players uh, disagree. They said just pulse away. If you if you pulse the Magirna, you pulse the Magirna. No no great loss. It's a salt vest. It's not threatening you. Yeah, he can Volt Switch on Pharaoh, but you can also maybe go to Pert, uh, throw out some attacks there wear them down for the collective rain assault to uh, win out in the end. But that's not what happened. So now Empo has a huge, huge, huge advantage. 
Um, yeah, so now he's going to go to Ferrothorn, and Empo does go right for Hydro Pump. I think that was a little... Well, I guess I can't really blame him for Hydroing there, because uh, you don't want Swampert just hitting you for, for completely free, because he's not recovering anymore. He's used up the Eopapa, and I guess he just wanted to uh, wear it down. I don't know. I think uh, Lando actually was a great move there. I mean, he doesn't, like, Volt Switch, you can say, hey, just Volt Switch, but he doesn't even have to. He could go to Lando because uh, with Burn and minus one, that's not going to do anything. He gets rocks up. Uh, if he goes to Torn, then he can go back to Rotom, or, and uh, hell, he can still respond to, he can still attack the Torn somehow with Lando, which makes Metacham better, and uh, if he goes to Pharaoh, then, you know, you trade rocks. That's not a ter too terrible because now... Another thing about Greninja being healthy is that it can switch in and out of rocks a couple times, and but now, you know, it's on a timer. Two, it switches into rocks once more, and then it dies. So, uh, Ferrothorn is going to get up the rocks here as Volcarona comes in. And now with Pert Burn, that's another thing that becomes majorly dangerous. Uh, because now it's, even in rain, it's not as much of a threat. Volcarona always does tend to be a threat, though, because um, even in this, even in a better scenario where uh, you go to Pelipper to get up the rain, if you get Volk in uh, and they have to go to Pelipper first, and that's two quiver dances, and that gets messy because then Swampert does not eat it anymore. So, Yeah, and the extra Quiver Dance is also helpful against uh, Greninja's Shuriken. So. But yeah, it would be... Uh, so it was always a threat, but it's more of a threat with the Purd um, burned, I guess. Because he does have to burn the uh, his Z-move here as he goes for the plus two Savage spin out and takes Swampert out of the game. However, uh, that also means that he cannot use it against Manaphy, which is another big target. So, uh, even if Pert uh, did not get burned, then Empo's ability to force this really dangerous uh, trade with uh, Volcarona was always looming in the background. As Hydro Vortex and Rain is going to plow through even the uh, double special defense of Volcarona and takes it down. However, uh, now Empo's still got hell of a hell of an advantage. I think because I think uh, he wouldn't have minded sacking Manaphy and then going in with Pert afterwards. So it was always going to be rough, but uh, if he, since he had managed to keep the bulk out of his way beforehand uh, via the amazing Greninja spiking thing and then getting up rock, so it was going to be at full health, which makes a big difference when every percent counts with Shuriken, then uh, he had successfully avoided Volk uh, pulling off that early trade. And, uh, as a matter of fact, that's what Blunder was trying to prevent on turn one when he led with Tornadus. Uh, so that was very heads up. But yeah, Kurt, uh, so... You know, now Kartana comes in, gets the knockoff, gets rid of Pelper's Damp Rock, who U turns into uh, out of Magirna into Manaphy, who's gonna. I mean, look, the Surf's not gonna do enough, but remember, every percent counts when you're fighting to get that transformation with Ash Greninja. And uh, Empo's gonna take it and take the next kill, so he is up five to four. And uh, the Slugfest is really getting in gear now. Uh, no pun intended. So, I think Metacham is generally his... Well, I, I thought he was going to go to Metacham because Fake Out delays Rain. But, uh, Fake Out also uh, invites Tornadus in for uh, non-fun. Because then, you know, knock off against uh, Magirna's Assault Vest. Yeah, generally a threat. So, he goes to Torn and then he goes to Pelipper. Which is a great move because he was baiting Secret... Uh, uh, not Secret Sword. That's Keldeos move. He was baiting Smart Strike, and then he went to Pelipper, who can then U-turn and give more offensive momentum. Great move. Uh, however, Empo saw this and thought he was going to Ferrothorn. That's why he went to, uh, for a Sacred Sword 
So uh, really nice thinking from both players there. Here comes Metacham. And he does eat the U-turn. Now Tornadus is getting looking really nasty again because, you know, rocks over here, no rocks over here, and uh, even a fake out to limit regenerator means Metacham's taking a uh, helmet. Now, of course, uh, Metacham's health isn't as important because generally if it's gonna if it takes a hit it's going to die whether it's at one percent or a hundred percent but it also limits uh it can pot potentially limit its stealth rock uh its ability to switch in and out later just so it can do this especially when ferrothorn's iron barbs and Cornelius's rocky helmet are involved so empo decides not to bother with that and he just goes right to landorus who so generally is not a tornado switch in but he doesn't have much use for it otherwise and he avoids the knockoff on the Magirna, and now he can respond either by getting his rocks up, uh, getting rid of them would mean that Blunder would get rid of his own, and that would be good enough. Uh, or he can slow turn and try to make something happen. Or he can attack, uh, depending on what move he has. If he has uh, HP Ice, that's that's something. Because uh, Tornace also takes Rocky Helmet damage from uh, Empos, uh, Landorus. So damage definitely being done here. And now he goes to Magirna on either the Hurricane or the Defog. So he damaged the Torn with his Lando. And uh, after this move, whatever it may be, then he was set to continue an offensive assault. So that was a really nice move. Um, Hurricane misses. That's That could matter because of, remember, every percent counts with Greninja. But that every percent counting also means that, you see this little thing where uh, it says 24%, that's one more switch into Stealth Rock. And this is who Blunder gets rid of the rocks with, and just goes right for an Ice Beam, uh, not even bothering to Volt Switch, racking, because uh, that was a good move, because that racks up, uh, that would have racked up more Stealth Rock damage, potentially unnecessarily for Empo, and uh, nothing's really switching into Ice Beam. I mean, Ferrothorn's burned with rocks up, I'm not saying it suddenly is threatened by the Magirna, but wearing it down is definitely good for, I mean, hell... Uh, if you take it out, then Metacham is one less residual damage uh, target to worry about. Kartana gets scarier. Hell, Rotom might improve a little bit, because uh, then it's tougher to actually switch into it. So I think the Ice Beam meme there was a very good move. Of course, uh, now he's going to actually hit the Ferrothorn, but he, he chunked the Tornadus, and that's big because of Kartana and Metacham. So, and, he, and it goes for HP Fire now. Beautiful move uh, to hit the Ferrothorn. Safely. So he really got as much as he possibly could have out of that exchange. So uh, Blunder keeping himself alive, going to uh, Pelipper on the second. But it, he just, uh, now it's a game of sacrifices. And Blunder does not have the pieces because his only kill option at this point is Greninja. And that has, uh, that is on a timer thanks to Stealth Rock. So Blunder has to like get the kill, get into Ash, uh, get the Ash Transformation, then get rid of Rocks and try to sweep with Greninja. Um, yeah, it's not the most outlandish thing. Water Shuriken does amazing things, but Fake Out is key here, uh, as in the, the rain stalling that uh, was mentioned earlier. So, uh, Bagirna's, he's thinking, well, I'm, I don't need to stay, even if he eats a Scald here, I don't really need to stay out of Greninja range because he's on that Stealth Rock timer. And uh, I have the Fake Out and the Scarf uh, because, well, if he can uh, if he can outstall Rain, then Grenin then Cartana has an okay chance of living Water Shuriken. So, and he's also got Rotom in case of Shuriken, uh, so he can do the whole, uh, so he can force it out that way. But he would ideally not want to give Tornadus that defog because Landorus cannot come in on Tornadus and get it back up. Of course, um, speaking of that, then um, Metacham is really dangerous now too with its fake out. So uh, that's something else to consider. So it's it's leaning in Empo's direction at this point. He's going to Volt Switch on the Roost, doesn't even eat the Scald, and now he's going to uh, get the Smart Strike kill. I think, I don't know, Scald might have been better, but... Actually, no, no, because then uh, you give Metacham a free fake out. At this point, it, it is looking enough uh, in Empo's uh, favor to where I'm not sure it matters. Now he doesn't have much of a choice because, I mean, even Ferrothorn's dead and it's not going to do anything. It might knock off the Scarf, but 
he's still uh, he would still be too threatening. So now uh, he's going to sacrifice Rotom as Blunder makes the prediction and goes for a Hydro Pump and takes it out. Uh, this also means that he can't follow up with Magirna, but he's going to follow up with the Metacham, which means Blunder has to sack Ferrothorn and then go into Tornadus um, to get the Defog so Greninja can live another hit. However, when Tornadus comes back in, then Magirna comes in and uses Volt Switch, and either Greninja switches in and dies, or Tornadus stays in and dies. And when Greninja is the last Pokemon, then Metacham just fakes it out, and that's game. So Empo does have this one wrapped up. So uh, I think this was a this was a great game. Uh, I I think it was incredibly tight, uh, worthy of the big stage. Uh, a bunch of other cliches, if you care to hear those. Uh, and yeah, now at this point, all he has to do is not, you know, somehow. Well, no, no. If he does what I outlined before, he wins 100. percent So, I mean, how he he can he sacks something here just so he doesn't, you know, switch my gear in and lose it for something, or uh, get more. <sighs> Ooh, man. Well, I I guess the Cartana. He could have also gotten a Cartana, but uh, no, he went to. Okay, I'm I'm overthinking now. Uh, however, uh, yeah, I think this was. Really well played, for the most part, especially by Empo, who had tools. Blunder had a really brutal early game. And, I mean, even the turn where he got um, Wisp, then it wasn't for nothing that he made that move. I think uh, he, he had very valid reasoning. He was just trying to play as aggressive as possible. But Empo, um, well, Empo did what he did, I, th I think. Uh, you got to give him props for that one. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I, I certainly did. And uh, yeah, I will catch you next time.